Now, the best way to understand the metaverse is to experience it yourself. All right, so let's talk about the metaverse, because this could be big, not only as a way to make a lot of money, but also in terms of how all of our future experiences could be right here in one of these things. All right, let me take it off. Even though the idea of a metaverse seems a little bit far-fetched, it's already happening. Virtual real estate is beginning to sell for as much as $2.5 million in Decentraland. Someone purchased land right next to Snoop Dogg for $500,000. Axie Infinity users are converting digital currency into an $82,000 a year salary. And as a result, Facebook is going all in on the concept, dedicating over 10,000 employees to building out the next digital world of opportunity. So let's talk about exactly what this is, how some people are building significant wealth in a world that's only just begun, my plan to invest and eventually become a metaverse millionaire in the next one year, and then finally, how you could use this information to get in early and make money by owning stocks, cryptocurrency, and ETFs that could shape the way the metaverse is created. Although before we start, if you guys appreciate this information and you want to hear more like it, just do me a quick favor and hit the like button for the YouTube algorithm. Doing that gives me a good indication if these are the types of videos I should continue making. And if it is, there's so much more we could talk about. So thanks for letting me know. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on the next video. And with that said, let's begin. All right, so in terms of what the metaverse actually is and why it's being described as the next phase of the internet, here's where things get interesting. Imagine a fully immersive digital world where you could put on a head Set, and then all of a sudden, you're in the same room as all of your friends. In this world, anything could be done anywhere, and all of a sudden, physical barriers don't matter. If you want to visit the Eiffel Tower, you could click a few buttons and be there within seconds. Or if you're attending a work meeting, teleport right back and join a conference about why you haven't subscribed yet, because you should really subscribe, since it's free. But here's where things take a step further. An entire economy could exist within this digitalized world. For example, imagine paying $10 to visit a metaverse museum where you could view the world's rarest NFTs and see exactly who owns them. Or buying a plot of land in Decentraland that you could then rent out to somebody who wants to build a casino on there where people gamble actual money. Essentially, anything that could be done in the physical world can be recreated in the metaverse, except your customer could be anyone, anywhere, at any time. Just like the internet created a worldwide opportunity without a physical storefront, the metaverse could take it a step further where products and services could be transformed on an even bigger scale. And what's crazy is that it's already been happening for over a decade. Back in 2010, the entrepreneur John Jacobs made history when he sold his club Never Die for $635,000, which at the time was a record for the most expensive virtual item ever. However, what made it so valuable was that it existed on the game Entropia, where users could pay to get access to his asteroid, much like a cover charge at a bar. And as a result, he was able to generate $200,000 a year. But today, that very same concept is alive and well, but bigger. First, we have Decentraland. This is a virtual world where users could purchase plots of lands, develop, and monetize. Now, what's unique about this is that once you own the land, it fully belongs to you, and you could choose to do whatever you want with it. You could create games, applications, museums, hangout, gambling services, you name it. There's even a marketplace for digital items like hats, shoes, furniture, and other accessories that people can make and sell on the platform, and it's a lucrative way to make money. For example, it's noted that there are 40,000 digital asset creators who make up to $122,000 a year, and 150,000 digital farmers who earn up to $25,000 a year, all within a virtual economy. In fact, some investors are even comparing this to being able to buy prime New York real estate hundreds of years ago, and if you think that's crazy, just listen to this. Just recently, the fashion district in Decentraland sold for $2.4 million. This is already an area being used as a shopping district where users could shop for virtual clothes from real brands like Prada, Gucci, and Ralph Lauren. And most likely with this purchase, designers from around the world could pay to be featured in front of hundreds of thousands or millions of people. The new buyer was quoted as saying, the fashion district purchase is like buying Fifth Avenue back in the 1800s or the creation of Rodeo Drive, and maybe they'll be right. Although fashion district in Decentraland is not even the biggest purchase. That award would go to Sandbox with a record-breaking $4.3 million purchase from none other than Republic Realm. They're an investment firm whose strategy is to buy, manage, and develop digital parcels in the metaverse. And when asked about the purchase, they said that we bought a city or the equivalent 
of one. We paid so much for it because we want to do something big, something very immersive. For them, the metaverse is a potentially $1 trillion a year opportunity that they want to be a part of, and their portfolio is quite unique. As you can see, nearly half of their holdings are held within the sandbox. 16.5% is invested within Decentraland, 21% is stored in Axie Infinity, and the rest is spread amongst a dozen other ventures that could continue to grow over time. Now, as far as what the sandbox actually is, it's a virtual game that allows its users to create their own products, services, and businesses through the blockchain. The co-founder explained that we think the opportunity of virtual real estate, digital land, is much more interesting than real physical real estate because of how fast you could develop your business and your experience on top of it. The hope is that one day, Sandbox could become its own economy using the currency Sand, which has recently surged from 70 cents to $5 on the announcement of Facebook's metaverse development. Although in terms of making money consistently, that award goes to the final number three, Axie Infinity. The Verge recently reported that some people are making thousands of dollars a month battling and upgrading their characters known as Axies. Just like you could collect, battle, trade, train, and upgrade Pokemon, Axie Infinity allows you to do all of that with their characters on the blockchain. Users are able to breed new Axies by spending currency earned within the game or purchased from an exchange, and by winning battles or selling up their beefed up Axie NFTs to other players, users could cash out by converting their currency to real money, thereby generating an income. In fact, a former Goldman Sachs associate claims that converting rewards earned on Axie Infinity to USD could exceed his annual income, especially with more than 200,000 live players at any given point. This has proven especially popular in low-income and developing countries where a digitalized game offers unparalleled financial opportunity that never existed before. For example, players in Ghana can make approximately $140 to $420 a month, which is several times higher than the country's minimum wage. And if you're wondering how much an Axie could be worth in its final form, well, this one just recently sold for $800,000 because of its rare attributes. Although in terms of how I plan to invest in the creation of the metaverse and what you could do with this information, here's what I think. I think the simplest way for people to gain exposure to the metaverse is by owning stock in companies who are actively involved in its creation. For example, we have Facebook, which is now Meta. It's reported that they'll be hiring 10,000 employees to begin building out their own virtual reality at the cost of over $10 billion. Now, even though Facebook certainly has its critics and the crypto community doesn't exactly seem welcoming of Zuckerberg taking over what many believe should be completely decentralized, you have to admit, Facebook pretty much has unlimited money and resources to do whatever they want. The second, we also have big tech like Google, Apple, Amazon, and Snapchat. All four companies are working on their own augmented and virtual reality that could end up playing a pretty significant role in the implementation of a half metaverse, half real world that we could be a part of. For example, it's reported that Google is working on a new augmented reality device after a job posting was made public. Apple iPhones and products integrate perfectly with their camera, allowing you to immerse yourself in a brand new world like with Pokemon or search for items by taking a picture. Amazon now offers online shopping where you could preview furniture in your room before you even buy it. And Snapchat is constantly pushing the limits by letting their users have free reign over their creations. The third, just like the term in a gold rush, you could sell a shovel, you could also invest in the companies that make augmented and virtual reality possible in the first place. Matterport, for example, implements 3D screening so you could digitalize anything in the world and walk through it as though you're physically there. This would allow anybody to bring their own home into the metaverse and essentially walk through or tour any location in the world similar to Google Maps. NVIDIA is another one whose graphics cards and artificial intelligence are used in processing all of that metaverse data. On top of that, their CEO reasons that companies could stand to save billions of dollars by digitalizing products and services, thereby decreasing waste and boosting efficiency. AMD also pairs very nicely with this, especially after Facebook announced that they would be using their graphics cards to help power the data centers. There's even an ETF called Meta, which basically just indexes all of the best investments for the metaverse. In fact, you can see all of their holdings right here, although the only downside is that they have a high expense ratio of 0.75%. So long term, you might be better off just buying these on your own and then saving the money. And by the way, speaking of stocks, the stock trading app Public wants to give you a free stock worth all the way up to $1,000 when you use the link down below in the description and sign up with the code GRAM. So if you guys are interested in getting a head start, the link is down below in the description. Besides that, if you want a riskier option to invest in the metaverse directly, you could do that through buying land, products, or the underlying cryptocurrency. But let's start with the land. Decentraland is limited to 90,000 plots, and that's it. 
Right now, prices range anywhere from $15,000 on the low end to millions of dollars in terms of current asking prices. But ultimately, if you believe in the utility and you think that you could generate revenue or traffic to your location, it could be a high risk, high reward investment. The same applies to Sandbox, where some people are bidding $10,000 to $150,000 for various locations, with some fetching millions of dollars, as I mentioned earlier. Now, in the future, they say that eventually you'll have the capability to rent your land, meaning you'd be able to become a virtual landlord and have someone pay you for the right to use your parcel. You could also create, sell, and flip digital items in the metaverse, like this yacht here that sold for $908,000. Now, even though that might sound like a colossal waste of money, one day you might be able to pay a cover to go on that yacht to network with other people virtually. Or imagine a business paying $50,000 to rent this yacht out for a business meeting where everyone could party virtually. At this point, I'll be honest, nothing surprises me anymore. I feel like I've seen it all. And finally, you could take what might be the simplest approach, which is simply by investing in the underlying cryptocurrency itself. Like you have Mana for Decentraland, Sand for Sandbox, Axie Infinity for Axie Infinity, or Facebook, who eventually will probably develop their own currency. Now, obviously, all of these could very well go to zero, and it's impossible to see how this might scale over time. But in terms of my own plan for investing in the metaverse in 2022, here's what I think. At this point, there really is no denying that there is a viable market out there for virtual items. NFTs are a perfect example of a collectible marketplace that some people are willing to pay a considerable amount of money for, so it only makes sense that a virtual world would be created to showcase them. Facebook is certainly going all in on the concept, and ARK predicts that it could hit $400 billion of revenue by 2025. Even though it's still incredibly risky, I do believe that as technology advances, it'll be easier than ever to virtually visit museums from around the world, hang out with friends, or pay a cover to hang out on someone else's virtual yacht. I could certainly envision a place where networking is done online through avatars and locations that only certain people holding certain NFTs could gain access to. And even though that might never happen, it's possible. I also believe businesses would be perfectly adapted to shifting their workforce online, sharing documents virtually, and collaborating from around the world in a more efficient way. Not to mention the pace of technology adoption is speeding up, so if something like this happens, it could happen fast. So in terms of my own investment and how I plan to invest a million dollars throughout the metaverse in 2022, here's what I'm doing. Right now, I just believe it's too speculative to buy the land or cryptocurrency directly. Even though it might offer the biggest payout, I'm just not in a position where I want to take that gamble. So for that reason, I would rather play it safe and invest in the companies that I believe will do well long term. That includes investing in Google, Apple, Facebook, Matterport, Snapchat, NVIDIA, and AMD. I've already been a long-term investor in several of those companies, so I plan to continue to add to that investment over time because I believe they will help accelerate the metaverse. I've also begun to allocate 5% of my entire portfolio to Ethereum because both the central end and sandbox are built from the Ethereum network, leading me to believe that Ethereum will continue to see a consistent demand. Between those investments, I'll have over a million dollars directly and indirectly invested in the metaverse without risking it all in the event one of them fails. This is partly one of the reasons why I've yet to take the chance to buy virtual land. I don't own any NFTs and I don't own any of those underlying currencies. To me, I'd rather just take a wait and see approach, even if in the long term it winds up making me less money. It's also important to mention that even though a million dollars invested in the metaverse is a lot of money, relative to the rest of my portfolio, it's only a small chunk of my net worth. So in the event it went to zero, yeah, it would suck, but I would still be okay. For anyone curious, I'll link to my portfolio down below in the description so you can see exactly what I'm invested in, but I still believe the metaverse is just the beginning and it's probably here to stay. Not financial advice, for entertainment purposes only. So with that said, you guys, thank you so much for watching. Also make sure, before you forget, just hit the like button and the subscribe button because it's totally free. And if you want to see more videos like this, especially, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out. Also, feel free to add me on Instagram and on my second channel, The Graham Stephan Show. I post there every day. I'm not posting here. So if you want to see a brand new video from me every single day, make sure to add yourself to that. Thank you so much for watching again. And until next time.